Yeah, I'm ready. You start the time. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, good evening, fellow seepers. Um, on behalf of my team and I, we're um, representing the United States as the house that uh, is very proud to believe that the EU and member state policies have cultivated extremism in the region. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, earlier this year, the US issued a European travel warning to its citizens in the wake of recent terrorist attacks in Paris, Sweden, and the UK. They recently renewed this travel warning um, to protect the uh, citizens of the United States. Um, according to, I just wanted to um, also give a little bit of background around the prompt. Um, we're going to be distinguishing between EU policies and um, member state policies because these are often in clash with one another. Um, and I'd also like to define extremism. Extremism is the adoption of a particular ideology um, with the intention to use violence to overthrow the ruling government. Um, so there are really two issues that lie at the core of the rising extremism in Europe. One is the challenge of migration, and the second is the lingering Euro crisis. Across Europe, you will find in the last decade since the 2008 financial crisis that populist extremist parties have played on these challenges to their advantage and called for people to rise up against the establishment, the corrupt elite which they associate with the EU. The European refugee crisis is full of horror stories. Um, we can look at some recent examples. In Hungary, for instance, um, there are videos of officials who've been caught on tape um, flinging food at hungry refugees. A Hungarian journalist um, was caught on camera kicking and tripping refugees that were fleeing from the police. And Hungarian authorities have used tear gas and water cannons on refugees. According to the Dublin uh, regulation framework, any country that's part of the EU is required um, to, for instance, when, when a refugee arrives into a country that's part of the EU, the country is required to give them basic amenities, food, shelter, and provide them with a job till they can be integrated into society. Hungary doesn't want to deal with any of this. The country has put a razor uh, wire fence um, along its southern border. Um, around Serbia so that they can, because Serbia is not an EU country, and so they don't want them to be the first country that the refugees come into, and so they get into Croatia, etc., and then eventually come into Hungary. Um, this is all by design. Prime Minister Viktor Orban has said that his goal is to discourage refugees from crossing into Hungary. In Greece, the Golden Dawn Party m members of parliament have often assaulted uh, physically, left-wing politicians, they beat up opposition members. Um, the soup kitchens and food banks in Greece are reserved only for true ethnic Greeks, and they regularly, consistently turn away people that are non-Greek. So it is clear from all of this that European values are under threat. There is no denying that. They are being challenged by these extremist ideologies of xenophobia, racism, intolerance, violence, and by the very narratives that go against the core principles that the EU was founded on. The EU, unfortunately, has not been assertive. Article 7 allows for the suspension of membership rights to countries that persistently flout these core values. However, these states a lot of the member states of the EU um, have been reluctant to condemn Greece or Hungary for their actions. Um, it is truly ironic that the EU was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2012. Our opponents will have you believe um, that it's probably the financial policies, for instance, that encourage cooperation in the EU. Um, and they will refer and evoke the nostalgia of the past from when um, the European Coal and Steel Coalition was formed after the two divisive wars um, as a check for countries uh, whose economies could be tied together so they wouldn't turn on each other. But then Brexit happened, and this is also nostalgia of the past. It doesn't necessarily apply today. If you try to understand the Eurozone um, as an economic policy idea, it is pretty stupid on multiple levels, especially with the single currency adopted by 19 member states. Ireland's main trading partners are the UK and the US. 
Finland's main trading partners are Russia and Sweden. Economics can't explain why they would want to be in a currency union with Italy, Greece, Portugal. Um, the economic policies of the EU have also created a debtor and creditor divide between nations. Um, people are beginning to ask rightfully why their taxpayer money is being used to bail out um, unsuccess unsuccess unsuccessfully bail out other failing states. Um, the EU as a whole is incapable right now of solving its citizens' problems through its policies. It, on the surface, it looks like there are 28 member states with the same rights, and it sounds like a great idea for cooperation, but some member states are more equal than others, and that is breeding ground for extremism. Thank you.